Hello and welcome to this lab demonstration on users, groups and permissions. After completing this lab video, you will be able to assign roles and permissions to an Active Directory user so that the Active Directory user can perform functions on a vCenter server. You might wonder, do I really need all of this? Can't I simply use a locally configured administrator account and that's it? All my administrators could share the account so it might be easier and simpler to do it this way? Well, there are several things that you should consider. One of them is when you have multiple administrators in a vSphere deployment, you really want to make sure that each vSphere client has a personal account. Only then you will be able to track who performed which action on which vCenter server. Further, you want to use Active Directory as an identity source so that you don't have to maintain separate accounts and passwords in vSphere. Using a single sign-on is really beneficial. We all know how hard it is to keep our passwords synchronized or to remember them when we have different passwords on different systems. Finally, you want to make sure that each administrator is only allowed to do what she or he needs to do. Implementing this concept of least privileges is an important security principle. Based on these considerations, I would strictly recommend to set up administrative access to your vSphere solution by following the best practices that we talk about in this lab demonstration. Since we will use the VMware vSphere client to configure the permissions, the users, the groups and all the related settings, you have to be familiar with the vSphere client user interface. In our lab, the vSphere server has already joined the Active Directory domain and the Active Directory domain is already set up as an identity source. We just focus on the configuration of the users and their permissions. So what are we going to do in this lab? Well, we will view the Active Directory users. We will assign object permissions to an Active Directory user. Then we will assign root level global permissions to an Active Directory user. Then we will log in as the Active Directory user. And finally, we will use the Active Directory user to create a virtual machine. I'm sure I provided you enough good reasons to watch the following video on users, groups and permissions. Now let's get started. In the first task of this lab, we will view the existing users that are part of the Active Directory domain that is already configured as an identity source. The name of this domain is vclass.local. We want to perform the configuration on vCenter server SA vcsa01. So the first step is to connect to this server. Then we log in as administrator at vSphere.local and the configured password. From the menu option up here, we open the drop down menu and we select administration. And now, under single sign on, we select users and groups. You can see that the domain here is set to local OS, so that's the local operating system, but we want to have a look at the vclass.local domain. This is the domain that we joined in Active Directory and this is also the domain that we set up as an identity source. So we select vclass.local here and then for example what we are looking for is that there is already an administrator account for this domain. In the following tasks, we will configure this username with specific permissions. The first permission that we will assign will be an object permission. And we will do that in the next task. So from the menu item, we select hosts and clusters. And in the navigation pane, we now select our 
vSphere server sa.vcsa01.vclass.local. Now in the right pane, you see that there is the permission tab. So we click the permission tab. And now we want to add a permission. So we click the plus sign. And for the domain, we have to select vclass.local. Now let's search this domain for users and we want to assign the permission to the administrator account. So let me just type in admin and then we already see that there is the administrator user and there are administrators, that's a group. So let me select the username. The role of this user should be an administrator and we want to propagate this permission to all the children of this object. So everything that is underneath our vSphere server. So I activate this checkbox and we click OK. And on the top of the list, we can see the entry vclass backslash administrator. And this user is assigned the administrator role. And it is defined in this object and all its children. In the next task, we want to assign a root level, a global permission to our Active Directory user. From the menu, we select Administration. And under Access Control up here, we have the entry Global Permissions. We click that one. Then in the right pane, again, we click the plus sign to add a permission. The domain should again be vclass.local. It's the same user that we want to assign the permission to. So we again search for our administrator user. For the role, this time we pick a different role and this time we use the role content library administrator. And again, we want to propagate the permission to children. We click OK. And we see the updated list where on top we have our domain vclass local with the username administrator and the role is content library administrator. Now where we assign permissions to our Active Directory user, let's log in as that user. So I'm logging out of the vSphere client. And this time I do not log in as administrator at vSphere.local, but as administrator at vclass.local, which is the Active Directory user that we assigned the permissions to. And we can see that login is successful. And on the top right corner of the screen, we see that we are now logged in as administrator at vclass.local. So we logged in with an Active Directory user account. In the next and final task of this lab exercise, we now want to perform some actions to check whether we do have the permissions that we need. And in this case, what we will do is we will create a new virtual machine. So in the Navigator pane, we go to VMs and Templates. Then we expand the ICM data center. In this data center, we have two folders, lab VMs and lab templates. Let's add a virtual machine to the lab VMs folder. So I right click that folder. And then we use the option new virtual machine. So we click next. You see that the folder 
is pre-populated because that's the folder that we right-clicked, it's Lab VMs, but of course we have to assign a name to the virtual machine. Let's call it Test VM. Then we click Next. Now we have to select a compute resource from our folder Lab Servers. Let's use the first entry, ESXi Host SA ESXi01. Then we click Next. Now we have to select the data store. We want to use the ICM data store, so we click that one and then we click Next. We leave the hardware compatibility for ESXi 7.0 and later. Then we click Next. For the guest OS, we select OS Family Linux and the operating system should be VMware Photon OS. Now we click Next. And on the hardware page, we will change the provisioning type to thin provisioning. This is just a test VM and we will delete it afterwards. So we don't want to allocate all the disk space and we don't want to fill it up with zeros. So thin provisioning is what we want to choose for this VM. We click Next. And now we can click Finish to actually create the virtual machine. In the recent tasks pane, you can see that the task already completed. So now the VM should be visible in the Lab VMs folder. That's the folder we selected when we created the VM. And you can see that the VM is in here. Our test VM has been created. This was just a test to check whether we have the required permissions. We don't need that virtual machine. So let me right click and delete the virtual machine from the disk. We confirm by clicking yes. So we are logged in with the Active Directory user account administrator at vclass.local and we successfully verified that with this user account, we are able to add virtual machines to delete virtual machines. Congratulations! You have completed the Users, Groups and Permissions lab demonstration video. In this lab, we first viewed the Active Directory users of the domain that was already set up as an identity source. Then we assigned object permissions to an Active Directory user of that domain. After that, we assigned root level global permissions to that Active Directory user. Then we logged in with that Active Directory user account. And finally, we verified that with this account, we have the permissions to create a virtual machine and we then deleted the virtual machine. Having individual personal accounts for administrators is a best practice nowadays and very often anyway required by a company's security policy. Using integration with Microsoft Active Directory allows you to utilize the users that are existing there and you have a single sign-on. So your users don't have to maintain different passwords for Microsoft Active Directory world and for vSphere administration. You will find this kind of director integration in almost every VMware installation. So it is important that you have the skills to configure the users, the groups and the permissions. Thank you for watching this lab demonstration video. I hope the knowledge acquired here will help you with your daily job assignments and good luck as you continue your journey in VMware world.